Now, the endurance phase is a very powerful phase of training. The endurance phase, I like to describe it to my clients as the phase within which we teach our body how to burn fat as a fuel source. We, we add some tone to our muscle groups. We also condition the body. There's a really cool verse in Hebrews where the writer of Hebrews says, let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. And the endurance phase is, is like that. It's, it's this, this part of you that, that doesn't know how to quit. Or when the going gets tough, you kind of grit your teeth and, and make it forward. So this is a, is a, a conditioning phase of training. Now, the endurance phase can last anywhere from 4 to 12 weeks, depending on your goal. Since this is a very catabolic phase of training, many times when I'm working with individuals who are trying to lose fat, they're trying to change their body composition, once we're pretty well trained, we will use the endurance phase to reduce their body fat percentage on their body and help them to kind of see the muscles that we've grown later in their training. But it, let's say you're, you're new to training and you just finished the foundations phase. The endurance phase will help you burn fat as a fuel source, but it will also help you condition your type one muscle fibers. It will help you to improve your VO2. It'll teach your body how to use fat as a fuel source, right? If we have a lot of fat on us, it teaches us how to tap into those fat stores. And, and I'm, I'm making the science here relatively easy, but, but in endurance, what we're doing is we're showing our body how to move oxygen under duress. The duress is the exercise and we're teaching the body how to deal with that. And also the endurance phase is a powerful place to grow some grit. Endurance phase workouts are difficult. They take they take a little moxie, if you will, to, to continue moving forward even when the going gets tough. I like to think of the endurance phase as climbing a hill, which I don't know how often you guys run hills, but for me, the, a hill is, is kind of easy at the bottom. About halfway through, you're like, oh, this is really rough. About three quarters of the way up, you really want to quit. And then when you're done, you're really happy that you finished. You're sweaty. You're breathing hard. But, but you look back at the hill and you're like, I climbed that hill. But boom, awesome. And, and that's what an endurance phase workout is like. Now, if you're, if you're relatively new to training, maybe your endurance phase workout won't be quite that intense, maybe 20 to 30 minutes of difficulty. Or if you're really well conditioned, we're talking like a pretty brutal 30 to, to 60 minutes of, of conditioning. And, and that can be powerful and difficult, right? So in the endurance phase, the, uh, and I've, got, I've got somebody live here. Good morning, Kat. <laughs> she says, I'm under duress just getting out of bed. And thanks to the hills, though, my, buck, my butt's looking pretty good. <laughs> I love it. And, and the endurance phase can do that. The endurance phase can help you tone particular parts of your body where you're like, hey, this is getting a little flabby or saggy here. Hey, this, is, this isn't looking the way I want to look. The endurance phase can help you see what's there when, when fat's removed from your subcutaneous stores. So... The, the workouts are, are physically and mentally challenging. And the focus of the endurance phase is push through with good form. So your acute variables here, this is what we call the, the reps, sets, tempo, time under tension, that sort of thing. Here in the endurance phase, we're looking at lightweight, heavier than the foundations phase, but still not super heavy. This is light to moderate weight with with more repetition so about 12 to 25 depending on the muscle group there are some muscle groups in the body that are primarily type 1 muscle fibers those are endurance muscle fibers so things like your calves things like your abdominal complex those are primarily type 1 muscle fibers and so they require quite a few more reps in order to dig into those type 1 muscle fibers whereas other also other muscle groups will be a little less type one heavy. And so they don't need quite as many repetitions to, to really dig into those endurance fibers. So, so 12 to 25 repetitions. That's why there's such a wide range there for the endurance phase. And it's very little rest. The, the goal of the endurance phase is not to work really hard and then rest for a long time and then work really hard and then rest for a long time. We want to work moderately hard the whole time. That's the goal. As soon as you've caught your breath, then it's time to get back to work unless something hurts, in which case you need to address some muscle imbalances and, and maintain that, that push through with good form mentality. 
And then last but not least, in the endurance phase, supersets and circuits are extremely effective in your weight training. So putting together several different exercises back to back and, and going through all of those can be a powerful way to program your endurance phase. From a cardiovascular perspective, you have built a good base in the foundations phase of training. You focused on the base. Now in the endurance phase, you can up the ante a little bit and start developing your moderate intensity. These are long intervals, right? So three to five, maybe even 10 minutes, depending on how well conditioned you are, of moderate intensity with a little bit of rest in between. This is also the phase of training where endurance athletes will work on their tempo, meaning they try to hold their race pace as long as possible. So if you're in the foundations phase and you do like 30 to 45 minutes of cardio at a pretty steady pace and you want to up the ante to moderate intensity, what you would do is you would say, okay, I'm going to do 30 minutes of cardiovascular exercise as an example, but I'm going to go five minutes that's harder than usual. I'm going to pick up my walking pace. I'm going to hit a hill. I'm going to do a little jog, that sort of thing. And, and then I'm going to rest for a few minutes and then I'm going to try it again, right? That would be like moderate intensity cardiovascular intervals. Whereas, whereas if I'm an endurance athlete, then what I'll do is I'll say, okay, I got to run this three miles as fast as possible and I'm going to go. Now that intensity is not as high as high intensity interval training. And in fact, unless you're very well conditioned, I generally don't recommend high intensity intervals in the endurance phase. So, so that's from an exercise perspective. Now from a nutrition perspective in the endurance phase, what we're doing is we're working really hard to teach our body to burn fat well as a fuel source to burn fat well as a fuel source and enhance our ability to burn fat as a fuel source, even under intensity. So that means we have to, we have to promote fat metabolism in our body. So we need a little more energy than the foundations phase, but our energy is probably best gotten from fats in our diet rather than more carbohydrates. And the reason for that is the endurance phase, like I said, is moderate intensity, not high intensity. We're not lifting really heavy weights for six to 12 repetitions. We're lifting light to moderate weights for 12 to 25 repetitions, and that is a fat burning process. And the more carbohydrates you eat in your day, the more difficult it's going to be for your body to ask your metabolism to burn fat as a fuel source during your workouts. And so in the foundations phase, we're getting good at getting enough protein in our system. We're getting good at understanding our simple carbohydrate count and, and reducing that. And then when we come into the endurance phase, we might need a little bit more energy, not a lot more, a little bit more. And it would be best if those energy molecules come from fats rather than carbohydrates. Again, if you're a very well conditioned individual, the endurance phase could also mean an increase in your carbohydrate intake, but that's pretty individual to you. The last thing about the endurance phase is that there's quite a few nutritional tools that can help you to be better at burning fat as a fuel source. An example might be fasting. Now, fasting is not for everybody, but in this phase of training, I find that many of my clients benefit from an intermittent fasting or even a long-term fasting practice. And it could be a powerful way to teach the body how to burn fat as a fuel source, how to depend on its own energy stores, and to give an opportunity for the digestive system to, to get a break. Because intense exercise definitely pulls some blood flow from the digestive tract while it shunts it to your limbs. There's a few other nutrition tools, things like berberine, things like complex carbohydrate intake, things like electrolytes that I've covered in a number of other places in our work here. So I won't belabor that fact. So the endurance phase, an amazing phase. Remember to focus and push through with good form while you enhance your fat burn, while you condition your type 1 muscle fibers for later phases of training, and while you work on your body composition.